I'm going to share with you gamer goblins a little secret. Shh, don't get any closer. Nintendo might be listening. Nintendo Pro controllers suck ass. You have controllers like the Power A Fusion, which has a D-tier paddle system on the Xbox. Guess what? It's no different on the Switch. You have a ton of third-party options like the Big Big One, but guess what? Only two rear buttons. No rear buttons, no rear buttons. I'm telling you, it's slim pickings with these chickens. The biggest issue with the selection of Nintendo Pro, Premium, or Custom Controllers on the market is not that they have crappy paddles, which they do, but more so the out-of-the-box dead zones and thumbstick accuracy. On average, the licensed Nintendo Switch Pro controller, as well as a ton of third-party options for the Switch, have between a 10 to 20% average error on the thumbsticks, meaning your inputs are not accurately being registered. As opposed to PlayStation and Xbox controllers that have virtually no out-of-the-box dead zones unless you have a janky thumbstick, not to mention generally have more travel and are a whole heck of a lot more accurate. Today I'm going to show you how you can use dozens of third-party controllers as well as factory controllers from Sony and Microsoft, wireless with PlayStation 3, 4, and 5 controllers, or wired with Xbox One or Series controllers. Also, if you have an Xbox 360 controller with a wireless adapter, you can use that wirelessly. So the Brook NS adapter can be had for 40 US dollars on Amazon and their website. Much like the other Brook adapters for Xbox and PlayStation, it comes in a very tiny box. Although instead of being dressed in lime green or brawler blue, it is going to be in red, which is Nintendo's theme color. And the model number NS delineates Nintendo Switch, I'm assuming. That would make sense. Now as for a warranty, Brook does offer one year of coverage on all their adapters, this one included. It says on their website to keep the receipt or some kind of proof of purchase, but if you can't find that, then they'll go off the manufacturer date of the actual year unit itself. So don't think you're screwed if you don't have your receipt. However, they do have to prove that it was natural causes and that it was manufacturer defects and you haven't been using this to play fetch with your dog or using it as a frisbee or anything like that. So you don't have a whole heck of a lot going on packaging wise. You just have this one small cardboard box here, which is going to have a couple of stickers, which are holographic like a Pokemon card, which is pretty sweet. And it does have two QR codes on the back that you can scan with your phone. The first one is to upgrade the firmware. And in order to do this, you will need to plug this into a PC. And then you can also scan this QR code to get the user guide, but the same complaint I had on their Xbox and PlayStation adapters, it takes you to a page with all of their products and you have to scroll all the way down to find your product, as opposed to it just taking you directly to the page for your specific adapter. But what you can do, I have found, is scan this QR code on the back, which will take you to the product listing or landing page for this product. And then right there, you can click on service manual and get to your manual that way. So the product itself is just a plastic USB stick. It's not very tiny. I wish it was a little bit more streamlined, but this is doing something pretty amazing. And that is the fact that it can wirelessly or wired allow you to use certain controllers. Now on the box, it does show that you can use Switch Pro, PS3, 4, and 5 controllers wirelessly. However, if you want to use any Xbox controllers, 360, Xbox One, Series, etc., that you have to go wired. However, a lot of the newer models of Xbox controllers actually have Bluetooth on board in addition to Xbox Wireless, which is a dedicated connection, which is not 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. It's a unique band or frequency called Xbox Wireless. Controllers like, for example, the Elite 2, which we are going to test this with, can go into a Bluetooth discoverable mode so you can link it up to a cell phone and use it to mobile game or link it to your PC via Bluetooth. So unless there is some kind of miscommunication with the Xbox drivers and Brook, you should be able to also wirelessly use Xbox controllers as long as they have Bluetooth, which like I mentioned, the more modern ones do. I believe on the Xbox One S and X, not Series S and X, but One S and X, when they did that midlife refresh and they changed the controllers to where they no longer had that notch or chin, they added Bluetooth. Yes, that is absolutely correct. The older models for the original Xbox One that had this chin or notch did not have Bluetooth. And then when the One S and X came out and they went to this version right here that had the little notch, we were enjoying the pleasures of Bluetooth. Over here in the living room with the Brook NS adapter, I have not done the firmware update, so this is just using it right out of the box. We're gonna see if everything's up and running. If not, we'll plug it into the PC and then do a firmware update. Now, before you use this adapter, there is one thing you need to do. Go over here to system settings, then come down here to controllers and sensors and turn on pro controller wired communication. And this makes it to where if anything's plugged into the USB port, for example, this adapter, it's gonna communicate with your controller. So quick side note, please excuse all the wires behind the TV. I'm currently reviewing a soundbar, the JBL 9.1, 
one. So I had to move around some HDMI cables to get the pass through out of the soundbar to the Nintendo Switch. Now that we've toggled that feature on in the settings, you are going to plug your Wingman adapter into the side of your dock via one of the two USB ports and then plug in a controller. And without doing anything further, as you can see, I am controlling my Switch with a PS5 DualSense controller. Okay, strike my previous statement. You 100% absolutely need to update the firmware. The controller was absolutely flipping out. As you can see, I could move around with the analog stick, but that was it. None of the face buttons worked, and then it just started basically flipping out all over the place without any input. So you do need a PC to do the firmware update. So hopefully you can borrow a friend's laptop or hopefully you got a home PC. I will have the exact link to the firmware update because it was a little bit of digging on their website. But now as you can see, she works like a charm. And to get it working wirelessly, guess what you're gonna do? Unplug it. Wait a couple of seconds. That's probably about enough. And then go ahead and wake up the controller again. Whoa. Whoa. We are using a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller wirelessly on the Nintendo Switch. What a day and age that we live in for gaming. That's hot. How about Team Green though? How about Xbox? Oh, that feels good. So those button bindings are not the default bindings for a Switch Pro controller, not to worry. This adapter allows you to not only rebind all of your button mappings, but also it has turbo functions so you can hold down a button and it will continuously spam it. But you have two options here. Well, that, that'd be four, but you have two options here. I could go into the settings of the actual game and rebind the buttons that way to where they match up with the face buttons on the controller, or I could use Brooke's method of remapping the buttons. Oh, that is cool. I can even put it into sleep mode by holding down the PlayStation home button. Why don't you take a little nap? You've had a rough day. Now, one thing to make note of, you cannot wake up the console when it is in sleep mode with a controller that is not, well, a licensed Nintendo Switch controller. So something like an Xbox or PlayStation controller simply won't do the job for you. Boom. That's the money. Instantly up and running. But if I unplug it though, oh yeah, it just instantly woke up my Xbox Series X as soon as I unplugged her. But this controller does have Bluetooth, so what I'm gonna do is hold down the pairing button on the top here. We're also gonna try this with the Microsoft Elite controller and see if this works. That is unfortunately a negative for wireless support with Xbox controllers, but you know what? Let's try the Xbox adapter for Windows PC. An adapter in an adapter. Adapter Inception. It doesn't work wirelessly. So like I alluded to earlier, you can remap. It shows you how to do that right here. It does also have turbo, which is a feature that I never use. And I don't recommend using it in any kind of tournament or competition or even online multiplayer, but something like a single player offline story mode, not a problem. And over here in compatibility, these are the controllers you can use, starting with the Astro C40. A ton of third-party options from Mad Cats, Microsoft, Nacon, Nintendo, PDP, Power A, Razer, Scuf. I used four or five controllers that aren't even on this list and they work no problem. I used three AIM PS5 controllers, two Hex Gaming DualSense controllers, a Mega Mods DualSense, and an Evil Controller DualSense. And they all worked. Here's why. Those are all based off a factory OEM standard PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, and then they modify on that base or platform. So basically any third-party controller that is based on a standard platform or controller, which is pretty much all of them, is going to work with this adapter, which is pretty sweet. As for where to buy, you can pick this bad boy up on Amazon, which is what I recommend because you are getting prime shipping, so it'll get to you in two days, and Amazon does have a no questions asked return policy. So in addition to Brooks' one-year warranty, if you just don't like this bad boy or it comes dead on arrival, you can return it no questions asked. So what are the pros, cons, and verdict? Well, starting with the cons, the fact that it absolutely needs a firmware update for it to be usable on a PS4 or 5 controller. If you don't have a PC, you're not going to be able to use this thing because you need a PC to install the firmware. The second con is the USB port that you plug controllers into is incredibly tight. You have to jam USB-C cables in there and rip them out. It is so dang tight. I felt like I was going to break it. I kept having to check. Uh, do I have the orientation on this USB port correct? It was just so damn hard to get in and out. And I thought maybe it would break in over time, but I inserted and reinserted a USB-C cable probably 30 times and it's still freakishly hard to get in and out. So you don't do what I did and knock your entire switch dock over and uncradle or seat your console. Hold the USB stick with one hand. Make sure you got a good grip on it. If you have any uh, power lifting chalk or anything, use some of that. And then go ahead and get two of your biggest mates to come over, slug down a pint and grab the other end and tug a war it out because it is freakishly hard to get out. Three, the fact that when you scan that QR code, it takes you to a list of all their products instead of directly to the product that you bought is an inconvenience. Four, no wireless support for Xbox controllers. I understand that this is an issue with Microsoft. This is specifically mentioned on their website 
website for some of their other products and adapters. The Xbox controllers used to work wirelessly with these adapters, but a recent firmware update on Xbox controllers, because you know, we live in an era where you actually have to update controllers whenever you turn them on with the console. It says, hey, um, there's a new update. One of those recent updates actually blocked adapters like Brooks from being able to do their job and use Microsoft controllers wirelessly on platforms that weren't meant for it. So it's Microsoft not playing well with others, not Brooke. But still, it, it, no matter who's at, at fault here, it still doesn't change the fact that if you want to use an Xbox controller, you're using it wired, which isn't a huge deal if you have a long enough USB-C cable and you don't have children or pets running around that might trip on the cable. But I prefer to play wirelessly when I'm in a casual console setting. Obviously, if I'm doing some esports athlete stuff at the PC, of course, wired. Well, not really. Actually, my mouse is wired. My gaming mouse is wireless and my headset. Now, as for the pros, the huge list of compatibility, a ton of third and first party controllers that you can use. I mean, literally probably hundreds of controllers you can use, because like I said, I tested probably seven or eight that weren't on the list and worked just fine. I also like that they offer remapping and turbo function, especially the remapping, because like I said, if you plug in a controller and it's not bound to the right face buttons, you can easily rebind them. So that's pretty sweet. I do like that it has a one year warranty. The pricing, I would say, is fair, but not fantastic. I have seen these go on sale on Amazon in the $35 realm. It'd be nice if these could retail for like $29.99, $30, $40. It, it is worth it, in my opinion, because you're able to use a slew of controllers on the Switch, which is the one console that has notoriously bad controllers. Like I said, the Dead Zone and Thumbstick Accuracy for Switch Pro controllers, the licensed Nintendo version, as well as all the third-party offerings for the Switch, they're all the same. I've tested the Thumbsticks, Polling Rate, Refresh Rate, and they're all in the same boat the same crappy boat with holes in it. So the fact that I can now wirelessly use one of my dozens of DualSense controllers is freaking awesome. It is awesome, but I don't have dozens of DualSense controllers. I probably have like 13 or 14. So if you've got yourself an AIM, Hex, Battle Beaver, Scuff, you already have a premium or pro controller that you probably spent a pretty penny on that you play on your PlayStation and PC, you can also now play that on your Switch. That's freaking awesome, and I think that's worth 40 bucks in my opinion. This is linked in the description below, and I strongly recommend if you own a Nintendo Switch and you play first-person shooters in docked mode on your TV, portable obviously doesn't matter because you're on Joy-Cons. If you play docked on a TV, go ahead and set that Nintendo Pro controller on the table and pick up this adapter and use a real man's controller controller. A, a better controller. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.